Hello fellow problem solvers! So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2012 IMO, problem number 4. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally 2 hours, but not more than 4 hours. If, on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, I suggest a preliminary look. I suggest you plug in some values, try to solve the problem for 15 minutes. Now's your time to pause and explore the problem play around with it. Okay, now we're going to go to the solution. So we have this function equation with a condition that a plus b plus c must be equal to zero. And the function is in the integers. It's from the integers to the integers. Now you can either plug stuff in right away or take a high level view and see if you notice something. This time I'll just take a high level view at the beginning and then I'll start plugging stuff in. So the thing I see here, high level, is that Everything, every variable has an F around it. There are no variables without Fs. Now this immediately by itself brings up the solution F of X is identically zero. Now what you also might notice in this functional equation is that it is homogeneous in terms of the powers of F. We have F squared here and F squared here as well. Now with that in mind, let's start plugging stuff in. So the first order of business is plugging in a equal b equal c equal zero and we get f of zero squared times three on the left hand side and we get six f of zero squared on the right hand side which implies f of zero is equal to zero. Now the next thing that you would plug in here at least the thing that came up to my mind is set one of a b or c to zero let's say a is equal to 0, b is equal to x, and c is equal to negative x, where x is some integer. Now from here we get that f of x squared plus f of negative x squared is equal to 2 times f of x, f of negative x. The other terms have been zeroed out by f of 0 equaling 0. Now take 10 seconds and tell me what does this mean? Well, this just means that f of x minus f of negative x squared is zero for all x that are in the integers, which means that f of x is equal to f of negative x for all x which are integers. And this tells us that we can focus all our attention on the positive integers. We can rewrite the function only in terms of positive integers. Now let's do that. Now here we can get rid of c when we do that and we are left with f of a plus f of a squared plus f of b squared plus f of a plus b squared is equal to this. I just read, wrote this for my own convenience, you don't have to do this. And this holds true because f of c is c is equal to minus a minus b by the condition and by our f of x is equal to f of negative x, this is equal to f of a plus b. The reason we can focus our attention on the positive integers is because the negatives follow immediately. And now we've narrowed down our focus about as to what we are looking at. Now here I would invite you to take five minutes, plug some stuff in, see what you find. Get your ideas out on paper. Take five minutes now. So here are some of my first ideas. So the first idea I get is plug in a equals b equals x. Let's see what happens when they're identical. And what we get is we can cancel out both two f of x squared on both sides and we're left with f of 2x times uh, f of 2x minus 4 f of x is equal to zero for all integers x. Now this could mean that say f of 4 is zero but f of 10 is equal to 4 times f of 5. It doesn't necessarily put all of the even numbers equaling to 0 or all of the even numbers equaling 4 times half of them. Here my intuition was let me remember this but let me plug in specific values like 1s and 2s and 3s and 4s and 5s and see if I can build up to a solution. Now let's do that. If I plug in a and b are both 1, I'll get f of 2 is either 0 or 4 times f of 1. These are two cases, so let me first take care of this case because it seems easier. 
So now let's go to this case. So for the case f of 2 is equal to 0, for me the immediate thing was plug in a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2. And what I get from there is a similar thing I had before. f of 2 equals 0 cancels a lot of stuff out. And I'm left with f of 1 minus f of 3 squared is 0, which implies f of 1 is equal to f of 3. Now what you might think of more generally is if I plug in x and 2, what I'll get is f of x squared plus f of x plus 2 squared is equal to 2 times f of x times f of x plus 2, which would imply that f of x minus f of x plus 2 squared is 0, which means that f of x is equal to f of x plus 2 for all integers x. Now this right here immediately solves the case f of 2 is equal to 0 because it implies that f of x is equal to f of x plus 2, which would mean that the solution is f of 2 times x is equal to 0, and f of 2x plus 1 is equal to some constant k, where x is an integer. Now, if we plug this into the original, and check it out, actually, check if for all a plus b plus c equals 0, does this function actually solve the functional equation? And the proof comes down to really realizing that if a plus b plus c is 0, then you'll either have 1 even number and 2 odds, or all 3 even numbers. If you have an even number and 2 odds, what you get is the f of odd 1 squared plus f of odd 2 squared is equal to 2 times f of odd 1 f of odd 2 which is true because all the odds are equal to the same k. So we have k squared plus k squared is 2 k squared. On the other hand, if all numbers are even, a, b, and c are even, then we have 0 equaling 0 on both sides. So this solves the case f of 2 is equal to 0. So let's go back now. So this case implies that f of 2k is equal to 0 and f of 2k plus 1 is equal to some constant c where c is any integer whatsoever and k is an integer meaning that the e f of even is 0 and f of odd is some constant c so now let's move on to this case f of 2 is equal to 4 times f of 1 so the first thing i would plug in is a equals 2 and b equals 1 sort of build up from a equals 1 and b equals 1. And what we get is 17 f of 1 squared plus f of 3 squared is 10 f of 3 f of 1 plus 8 f of 1 squared. Moving it all on one side, we would get 9 f of 1 squared minus 10 f of 3 f of 1 plus f of 3 squared is equal to 0. Now this is just a problem of factoring now and Noticing that if f of 1 is equal to f of 3, that this is true, we get that we can factor this as f of 1 minus f of 3 times 9f of 1. So 9f of 1, we have minus 9f of 1f of 3. And now we need minus f of 3 equaling to 0. Now this means there are two cases, really. It's either going to be f of 1 minus f of 3 is going to be equal to 0, i.e. f of 1 equaling f of 3, or we'll have that f of 3 is equal to 9 times f of 1. Now I invite you to pause for 10 to 15 minutes and try to solve both of these cases. So let's start off with case 1. So in the subcase, f of 1 equaling f of 3, we write f of 4 in two different ways, namely plugging in a equaling b equals 2, we get f of 4 must be 0, or 16f of 1, and plugging in 
a equals 1 and b equals 3, we get f of 4 needs to be 0 or f of 4 needs to be 4 times f of 1. Now because these must hold simultaneously, this means that f of 4 is equal to 0. Take 3 minutes, pause and try to see if you can solve this case now. Here's the solution. So plugging in a equals x, some integer and b equaling 4, we get that f of x is equal to f of x plus 4 because f of 4 equaling 0 cancels everything out except f of x and f of x plus 4. Now, given that we already have f of 1, f of 3, f of 2 and f of 4 defined, this means that our function turns out to look like this. f of 4t is equal to 0 for all t. f of 4t plus 2 is equal to 4k and f of 4t plus 1 is equal to f of 4t plus 3 is equal to k. And this holds true for all t that are integers. Now we need to check that this solution actually works for all a plus b plus c equaling 0. Now it's similar as last time, namely if we have all even numbers, then either 2 or 0 of them are going to be of the form 4t plus 2, which means that at least one of them will be of the form 4t. So let's write this case down. First case, a is of the form 4t1, b is of the form 4t2 plus 2, and c is of the form 4t3 plus 2. What we would get is that f of 4t2 plus 2 squared plus f of 43 plus 2 squared is equal to 2 f of 42 plus 2 times f of 43 plus 2. Now this is true because this is equal to 4k squared plus 4k squared is going to be equal to 2 times 4k times 4k. In the other case, if all of them are of the form 4t, then we just have all zeros. If a is equal to 4t1, b is equal to 4t2, c is equal to 4t3, then we get zeros on both sides. On the other hand, if you have two odds and one even, then we have the cases either 1, 1, 2, modulo 4, the case 1, 3, 0, modulo 4, the case 3, 3, 2, modulo 4, and we did check all of these and find out that they're true. However, both of these cases are already checked up by plugging in 1, 1 and 1, 3, 4. So it only remains to check this case and it actually turns out to be true because the left hand side turns out to be 4k squared plus k squared plus k squared equaling to 2 times 4k times k plus 4k times k plus k times k, which turns out to be 18k squared equaling to 18k squared on both sides. So this case is true as well. And this solves our subcase with f of 1 equaling f of 3. So now let's go to the second subcase. Now before showing you the solution, I invite you to pause for 3 to 5 minutes and see if you can solve this and potentially solve the entire problem. So the idea is doing the same thing as before, plugging in a equals 1, b equals 3, and then a equals 2, b equals 2, we get that f of 4 must simultaneously be either 4 f of 1 or 16 f of 1, and at the same time either 0 or 16 f of 1. Now if f4 were 0, then we'd get that f of 1 would need to be 0 as well, which would produce a solution to our functional equation. So the other case would be f of 4 equaling 16 f of 1 both here and here. Now I invite you, now that we know that f of 1 is equal to f of 1, f of 2 is equal to 4 f of 1, f of 3 is equal to 9 f of 1, and f of 4 is equal to 16 f of 1, what would your conjecture be for f of n? 
Well, if you notice a pattern, I'm noticing that f of n would be n squared times f of 1. So now let's try to prove this. I invite you to pause for five minutes and try to prove it yourself. Here's my take on it. Induction! Namely, we first plug in n and 1, similar to how we were plugging in 1 and 3, 1 and 2. And we get this monster right here. So the thing we get looks incredibly scary and difficult to factor. But knowing that we're really aiming to get f of n plus 1 equaling n plus 1 squared times k, we have a hint as to how to factor this. Namely, we should be getting f of n plus 1 minus k times n plus 1 squared in one bracket. And then in the other bracket, to get this, we need to be getting f of n plus 1 minus k times n minus 1 squared equaling to 0. Now, luckily, this actually is the factorization of this equation right here. But this gives us merely that f of n plus 1 is either going to be k times n plus 1 squared, or it's going to be k times n minus 1 squared. So to remedy this, we do plug in n minus 1 and 2, and we get another monster of an equation. But because we know that f of n plus 1 equaling k times n plus 1 is probably going to be our solution, that can give us a hint as to how to factor this monstrous equation. Now that we get that both this must be 0 and this equation must be 0, it follows from here that f of n plus 1 is equal to k times n plus 1 squared. Now this completes our induction and we can conclude from here that f of x is equal to k times x squared for all natural numbers x. But because f of x is equal to f of minus x, this also holds true for all integers x. Now let's plug it back in and see that this solution actually works. Plugging in c equals to minus a minus b, we get that our functional equation solution actually satisfies the original functional equation. So now let's bring it all back and sum it all up. So we plugged in all zeros and got that f of zero is zero. And then plugging in x and negative x, we realized that we could focus our attention only on the natural numbers. So from here, we tried looking at the equation more generally. And then we realized, no, let's actually look at some smaller cases, namely a equals one, b equals one, plug stuff in, see what we get. Now that led us to two cases, one of which was f of 2 is 0, or f of 2 is 4 times f of 1. The first case gave us a solution, f of evens is 0, and f of odds is a constant c, where c is an integer. We checked it out and figured out that it actually does work. So we then moved on to the other case, f of 2 is equal to 4 times f of 1, and we figured what best to plug in than 1 and 2. This gave us two subcases, namely the subcases involving f of 3 equaling to f of 1, or f of 3 equaling to 9 times f of 1. And then we moved on to solving first the case f of 1 equal to f of 3, where we got that f of 4 must necessarily be equal to 0 in this case. And that led us to a, fa to a solution family, namely f of all numbers divisible by 4 being 0, f of numbers giving remainder 2 when divided by 4 being 4k, and f of numbers that are odd equaling k. We checked this for all cases and saw that it actually worked. And then we finally decided to solve the case f of 3 is equal to 9 f of 1, which inductively led us to the solution that f of n is equal to n squared times f of 1. And then finally, we checked to see that this works for k non-zero as well as k equaling 0. And now we finally bring it all back in with the solutions being solution 1 being f of x is equal to x squared times k for all integers x and where k is some constant in the integers. Solution 2 being f of odds is equal to k and f of evens is equal to 0 where k is some constant in the integers. And the final solution being f of odds being k, f of numbers divisible by 4 being 0, 
but f of evens not divisible by 4 being 4 times k, where k is some constant in the integers. Now this concludes our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.